Hey folks, I am back and we've got Barrel and Blade for February and I'm pretty happy because I've been liking Barrel and Blade. I have been liking Barrel and Blade lately. I mean, not lately, I like Barrel and Blade, but it's been, um, as boxes go, it's been, I've been pretty happy with it. And we've got a Tato prancing around in the background. So anyway, Barrel and Blade, February, 2021. Let's get into this guy and see what we've got. Um, pretty excited doo, 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 doo. yes cutting towards myself but I've got to work around the camera sorry so we've got the level 2 box here uh oh oh they did it they sent me medical stuff uh oh that'll be fun um, what is this over here? Modular 223 laser bore sight. Okay, so this uh, has the potential to be awesome or a huge disaster. Let's get everything unpacked and see. Well, not a lot of items as a barrel and blade box goes, but some high dollar MSRP items as barrel and blade goes. Um, so level two, uh, as opposed to level one, level two adds one item. Um, that the level one box does not have. So we're gonna go through this all and we're gonna see what we've got. Um, we've got a 10% off code. If you uh, are not a Barrel and Blade subscriber yet, so we'll throw that back in the box. And so the items that we've got are interesting because three of them relate directly to uh, 556 or 223 and yes there is a difference in the round technically I'm not going to get into this again but for the most part we can consider them the same um, but anyway uh, most of it is wow, as a heavy son of a bitch um, is directed towards the the uh, 556 platform the AR platform and then we've got the one other item so remember this is barrel barrel and blade um, so we're going to go through everything as usual and we're Voodoo Tactical is a brand that I've said over and over. I love Voodoo Tactical stuff. I really like what they make. My favorite pack is a Voodoo Tactical. Uh, it's the Matrix. I think it's the Improved Matrix or the Matrix 2 or uh, the Matrix Returns or whatever, but it's, it's a great pack. I love it. Um, but sending me a Tactical Trauma Kit is, uh, is a ballsy move, I gotta say. Um, I'm trying not to cut the pack inside the package. I want to be very careful opening it up. So first of all, their, their nylon gear is very rugged. Anything by Voodoo Tactical is very rugged. And it's OD green, so it matches my pack perfectly. Um, they've got these yeah, very solid zipper. I mean, I'm good, just going to say it's going to throw it out there. The construction of Voodoo Tactical is awesome. Um, unfortunately, I did leave the the pack right next to the chinchilla cage one day and he chewed up one of my one of the one of the pouches on my pack um but so you've got these reinforced um pals webbings you know molly compatible stuff it's got plastic in there so it helps keep its shape you know otherwise if they're soft you, you have you have trouble threading them through the webbing but so you've got that um and then more webbing to put more stuff on the outside if you so choose because you know this goes somewhere where you're taking up the webbing so you can put some more stuff on there uh, more pouches or if you just wanted to put something like that on there you could all right so now does this give a packing list of contents it does um, all right let's see what we've got in this tactical trauma kit Well, okay, first of all, all right, so I'm going to I'm going to go full combat medic on this and say I love the construction on the pouch for a medical pouch. I this is not the most convenient. You don't want one that snaps closed on you cuz when you're working, you want a pouch that stays open. I prefer the ones that open like a small shelf or um if, you, if it's gonna stay attached to your gear, or if it's got the quick release like this, I like one that stays fully open, open on the ground, where you have full access to everything, because the last thing you wanna do is with bloody gloved hands, have to keep opening and smearing that stuff all over your gear. Um, then it becomes an infection control and decontamination nightmare. Um, plus, not to mention the difficulty of getting to the rest of the supplies. But, so, uh, you see, and on, so I, I get it, this keeps it 
you keep here from dropping stuff, but in an actual trauma situation, if you're treating somebody, um, this pouch has got you're not you're not reaching into this pouch on your person. If you are actually so you're the combat medic, right? And you are you are taking care of somebody. I'm taking this pouch off. I'm putting it down next to them. If this is all I have, you know, like my medic bag when I was deployed. I didn't like leave it slung over my back or over my shoulder and turn around and keep reaching into it. I threw it on the ground next to him. So it would be great if this thing could open. Now, if this is your pouch, you could very easily just cut this elastic and then have one that fully, I mean, if you look at the way the zippers are, it fully opens up 180 degrees open and you have access to everything. Inside the pouch, you've got two large elastic keepers. So you could put um, whatever, all this in there. Notice. They give it to you in a bag so you can pack the bag the way you want, which is cool. And then you've got this large sleeve inside with two more elastic keepers here. They're actually double, so you could double. And then double elastic keepers here and here for tools, okay? Um, no real weatherproofing, but I wouldn't expect you need that so much because everything comes, you know, if it's medical, it's it's wrapped, it's sterile, it's clean, so it's, you know, going to protect it. You have a drainage grommet, but it is very heavy gauge nylon, double stitching all the way around. So the pouch is awesome. So you could even transfer this stuff to somewhere else and use this pouch for other stuff. Very nice pouch. Let's look at the contents. And I'm going to actually give you a time code. I'll go edit this in later of when I'm done critiquing the medical contents of it. Um, now, number one, if this doesn't come with a chest seal, it's not a tactical trauma kit at all, but we'll get to that later. Um, so what do we got here? We have a Dynastopper, multi-purpose wound and trauma dressing. So bulky, uh, this is a, oh, this is a little kit, it looks like. So you've got a non-adherent dressing. These are good because they don't stick to the wound. If you ever if you ever see that non-adherent, it's it's got a coating or, or a film on it. A regular gauze dressing, as um, blood coagulates, uh, it, the gauze will actually get stuck to that clot. And then when you go and you rip that gauze to try to change the dressing, you rip the clot off and then the, bl the bleeding starts again. Non-adherent dressing resists sticking to that clot. So you've got a non-adherent dressing. You can tell, see how it's like kind of glossy. I know it's inside a plastic bag, so it's hard to tell, but it's, it's a little bit glossy. And then it looks like you've got two uh, bandages and um, just quick medical. Um, dressing goes on the wound, bandage goes around the dressing to secure it and keep it clean and tidy. So that's the difference between a dressing and a bandage, by the way. Um, uh, they should ideally, in an ideal world, everything's sterile, but if nothing else, your dressing should be sterile and your bandage can be anything you have there. Uh, you know, in the movies, they always rip open shirts and wrap it around. Try to avoid putting that directly on a wound because that's going to get it infected. But if you have a sterile dressing applied to the wound, then you can take your whatever you have and apply it, you know, to hold the dressing on. But in, in, a, in a perfect world, everything is sterile. So it looks like you've got your non adherent dressing and then you've got two um, gauze rolls. And then it looks like maybe just some gauze pads on top too. Um, additional stretch gauze roll for use as pressure bandage, non-stick expandable pad. Dynastopper can also be used as an arm sling. Okay. So that's, that's cool. That's good to have. What do we have here? Woven gauze sponges, sterile 12 ply. This is just a four by four. It's probably one or two four by four gauze pads. That's all it is. These things, I've, I've talked about them at length. They are awesome to have in all sorts of situations. You can cut through a small bone with them by accident. Um, you can also cut through a penny if you want to show off, although they kind of lose their edge there. Great for cutting through clothes. You have to expose the wound to treat the wound. Um, Non-medical professionals, watch out for this because if you're cutting people's clothes off and you're not qualified to do it, they may be upset. But like in the medical world, you've got to expose the wound to, you've got to see it so you can treat it properly. And these are great for, for doing that. They cut through very rigid stuff like nylon and, and um, all that stuff, cut through seat belts, cut through thick uniforms, um, cut through jeans, cut through leather, they cut through anything. Um, but these should be in every good medical pack. And most medics have two or three of these, you know, on them at any one time. What do we have here lying around? So medical tape, not my favorite kind of tape, but it works. I don't like the cloth tape because I just don't. Um, I loved something called Transpore by 3M, which was a plastic tape. It stuck even when it was wet, super easy to rip single-handed. Um, 
but this is just standard medical cloth tape. Okay, you get two little rolls of it. Ace bandage, do I need to talk about ace bandages? They're good for all sorts of stuff. This looks like an iPad. Yep. Um, one iPad though, to tell you the truth, is not much good because eyes have what we call sympathetic movement. When one eye moves, the other one wants to move with it. Very rarely do you see somebody moving one eye. So let's say you get something impaled in the eye. I told you guys, I, when I go into medicine, I go into medicine. This is why I avoid making medical videos. Um, if you get something impaled in the eye, let's say they get a stick in the eye, you not only need to um, immobilize that eye, but for the purposes of sympathetic movement, you wanna ban, you wanna, you wanna you know, like immobilize that other eye so that they don't like something flashes in the corner of their eye and the good eye, they move it. And then they, with the sympathetic movement, the, the, the eye with a stick in it moves too. And now you've got that stick doing more damage. We usually just basically um, blind the person and you want to, so you want an eye bandage, you know, if anything happens, but you, you want, you want more than one. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up the whole, both eyes and, and say there, you can't. Now this is good if like they get a mild corneal abrasion or something like that, but that's not really trauma. That's something else entirely. But more than one eye, well, eye pad is good to have. You probably want four. Um, oh, and here's the essentials of first aid. Okay. Abdominal dressings. These are good, good. Oh, look at this, a bunch of them. These are awesome um, because these are very absorbent. These are also non-adherent. Um, these are these are just what we might call bulky dressings, although these ones aren't that bulky. Um, you just pack these on. They are, like I said, non-adherent. They um, absorb a lot of stuff and you can just pile these on. Good for all sorts of penetrating trauma. Um, or big open wounds, and yeah. Oh, by the way, once you are, when I mentioned taking gauze off, you don't take gauze off in the field. That's in the hospital setting. Um, there are some pre-hospital settings where you would take gauze off, where you would take dressings off and change them, but rarely, rarely, without having a certain level of, of training, do you take, do you change dressings in the field? Um, that's a hospital thing. Um, so you just, you can always add more dressings to it. If you need to stop bleeding, you don't take stuff off. And then another four by four. Okay. Then we've got a triangle bandage, which is great for, you can use this to bandage up dressings or you can make a sling. Typically we include two to make a sling and a swath. So if you need to immobilize uh, a long bone, um, or any kind of uh, joint, you always immobilize above and below, um, but you know, one is good, two is better. Like, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna put a sling, you usually then want to try to wrap around and completely immobilize, but that's, you know, it's okay. And then in this little thing, what do we got here? Um, aspirin, two aspirin, okay, sure. In a trauma situation, that'll, that'll calm them right down. Um, a BZK benzochloride. I always pronounce that wrong, but it's an antiseptic. It's a, it's a pretty good antiseptic. It's better than just alcohol. Um, iodine prep pad. Cool. If you're not doing surgery though, you know, I mean, it's again, it's a good antiseptic, but it's usually the kind of thing where you're cutting into somebody. Um, alcohol pads. Oh, good. Here's two more aspirin. All right. We're going to be fine now. We've got, oh, we've got four aspirin. Awesome. Lots of aspirin. Um, you know what? So here's my thing. This is a trauma kit, right? Awesome. Do you know why they give aspirin daily to people with certain, um, how aspirin, sorry, aspirin prevents heart attacks because a heart attack is caused by the occlusion of, of cardiac blood vessels. This prevents random blood clots. Never give aspirin to somebody in a trauma situation. Never, because it, it thins the blood. It doesn't thin blood. It doesn't, it prevents clotting. Aspirin is not a good thing to give to somebody in a trauma situation. Not a good painkiller to somebody that's bleeding already. No, no, not, not good, not good. And then first aid and burn cream. Okay, cool, good to have. All right, so I'm gonna cut it here. Some good tools. Yeah, basic, basic. I would say this is more of a, of a, of a, yeah, they don't have band-aids and stuff. I always say this to people, a medic, as a medic, unless, unless I was actually deployed in combat, 
I spent most of my time in the field doing little things like scrapes and burns and boo-boos, believe it or not, for my soldiers. Um, I spent more time handling routine stuff at sick call in the morning, um, you know, taking care of my guys than actually trauma stuff. You know, it, I, I'm all right, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, so anyway, this is not a bad kit. It's not a great kit. Um, $40, I think you're paying a lot for this pouch, which is a good quality pouch. It's a very good quality pouch. I always want to rig out my medical stuff personalized. And here's the thing too. So if you are familiar with your activities, you know what you need better than anybody else. If you don't have any medical training, great. Take a first aid class. Take a basic first aid class. Learn what these things do and how they do it. Take an advanced first aid class. Take an ENT class, whatever. But get familiar with the tools and then evaluate what your activities are and the risk factors I promise most of the stuff that people use from the big fancy first aid or trauma kits that, that they buy though are band-aids. Band-aids and burn cream. I, I swear. And a lot of times you don't even need the burn cream. You just need, there's some simple steps to handling a burn. These kits are great to start you off stocking your stuff. And then you know what you need based on, you know, once you have a little bit of training and you know your particular activities and what your risks are. The risks of somebody that spends time, a lot of time, in the Pine Barrens is different from somebody that spends a lot of time boating or on a beach, you know? I mean, so um, that's the end of that lecture. I'm sorry, guys. I go off on medical stuff. You know I do. All right, so we've got the Voodoo Tactical Kit in Like It right over here. Next, we're going to take a look at the Ergo Barrel Flags. Now, if you're not an avid shooter, you probably have no idea what these are or what they are for. They have an MSRP of 675 Um these are both a safety item and an awareness item. So when you're shooting, and military-wise, we use these a lot on the range. And, you know, in order to demonstrate this, I have to bring out an actual firearm. So here I go, risking demonetization. Um, but when you are shooting and you want to indicate to everyone around you that your weapon is safe is not loaded you'll take a barrel flag and you'll put it in your chamber and you can then i'm about to commit a cardinal sin i'm going to ride this bolt forward but i also don't know how sturdy these things are and i don't want to kill it um and this will stick into your chamber and it will let everybody know there's no way that there's a round chambered inside because this can't fit in there if there's a bullet in there so this weapon is safe there's, there's nothing that can be in there. It can't be loaded right now as long as this is in there. Um, so it's, it's safety for you because you can quickly and easily look. You can't accidentally chamber around and anybody around you on the range and, or you know, even at home, um, anybody can, you know, you're organizing, cleaning, whatever, can quickly and easily see that you've got a flag in there, that this is unloaded, this firearm cannot fire accidentally or on purpose or whatever um, so like i said safety and awareness um, they're good to have they're good to have um, i i don't see a lot of people using them very often yeah i see them used in competitions and i see them used um professionally like i said uh you know military wise on the range all the time um you you'd put one in when you were you got rotted off the range which meant that um you know if you're familiar when you fire your last round the bolt locks to the rear and then as you come off the range one of the range safety officers rods you off the range which is a process and um one to to verify that that the the rifle is clear and then you put a, a flag in and you know that way everybody knows you can't you there there's nothing in there it's it's been you've been rotted off the range and you're clear and safe yeah if you're again if, if you're an avid shooter these things are pretty good uh and this can be used this says it can be used in a, a multiple platforms semi-auto pistols um rifles high uh, it's a semi-rigid polymer high visibility colors it's you know um you get three in a package that's not that's not too bad actually you know two dollar little safety device 675 maybe find them for cheaper i'll put these in like it too because they have a good purpose and uh, i honestly don't have any of these at all so not bad um this is going to be another shooter box though and you know if you're not a shooter um well you 
somebody commented I forgot who it was, um, but somebody who, who, you know, avid watcher of the channel. It is barrel and blade, you know, not just blade. So you should be aware of that. So let's move on to the aim shot laser bore kit for $46. Now, another good tool to have. So again, speaking military experience, why do I do that? Because that's where my experience comes from most of the time. Um, before you go to the range and qualify, you have to zero your rifle. Zeroing means that you set your sights for a specific range at a certain um, setting. And we always set our, our, we always zero for 25 meters at a certain setting and um, with with the M4 or, or M16. And when you set your sights up on the 25 meter zero range, you are then prepared to engage targets theoretically all the way out to 550 meters for a, a point target um, or up to 800 meters for an area target, um, theoretically, theoretically, um, on the old army range, uh, you know, 300 meters was the farthest target that you had to engage. Um, and when range instructors would quiz me and say, what's the maximum effective range of your rifle? I would say, oh, about 250 meters. Cause I can't see crap beyond that. Um, and apparently as funny as I thought that was, they did not think that was funny. That was not the right answer. The right answer was 550 meters for a point target and, you know, 800 meters for an area target or something like that. Um, but you're not always going to have an active shooting range to allow you to zero your rifle, um, and bore sight it. And you need to, by the way, bore sight your optics too. So bore sighting and zeroing is kind of the same thing. Um, it means arranging your sights so that they are aiming at the point you think they're aiming at. And these laser devices allow you to do that without actually firing around, which is pretty cool. So they all work just a little bit different, but um, so you put this round in and it shoots a, a laser down the barrel and you can adjust your sights, you can adjust your optics so that when you aim, your point of aim through the sights, through the optics are actually where the laser is hitting. And that way, um, you know that you are you are bore sighted. We do the same thing, by the way, which is pretty cool. We do the same thing with tanks, with guns, big guns. You have to bore sight any weapon, um, and it's it's not that it's not that easy to bore sight a 25 millimeter uh, M242 Bushmaster cannon. Um, but it is done. It is done. Um, and the big guys on the Abrams had to do it. You have to, you have to bore sight anything. You have to bore sight laser optics on targeting pods on aircraft. Um, so this kit allows you to do that. I don't know exactly how this one works or how this compares to other ones on the market. I'm gonna have to ask Darren because Darren is is a real expert at this stuff. I will definitely, um, I will definitely check this out. I like this because it lets you set up anywhere in your home, outside, whatever. Um, almost like a little, not a firing range so much, but lets you, you know, make sure that your sights are, are pointing where you want them to be pointing, where you think they're pointing. Um, so that's very useful. And with ammunition prices the way they are today, wow, this could save you a lot of money. So $46. Now, again, I, I'm going to ask, so I'm going to put this in the preemptive like it pile for now. Um, I can't. I, I may come back to this later after I talk to, to Darren about this brand and, and how it works. But in theory, I like it. I, I really need to, I need to get more familiar with how this particular brand works and how it all, you know, compares to some of the other ones on the market for the price, for the functionality, for what is this thing? This is the external battery. I think maybe this screws in here. I, I don't know, but you know, like I gotta, I gotta figure this out. So this goes in here. So this can be an external battery, so you don't have to use those little ones. Um, and you put this in, you don't slam your bolt forward because this will cut the wire. Or you can um, you can just use the batteries internally. Very, very interesting. I gotta read all the directions. I do like this though, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to use it. So this guy will go and like it. This is great, whole box of like it's. What a great box so far, <laughs> all right. Of course, it's only four items, but now we've got one final item to look at, and it is the real avid AR-15 tactical 
Gun multi-tool. Now we've seen some real avid items before, and I liked them. They've been good. They've been pretty good. So this is basically a multi-tool that is set up for AR-15 use. Now I have the Leatherman Mutt, which is also set up as a as a you know general use multi-tool, but kind of uh, intended to be an, an M4, M16, AR-15 maintenance tool. It's got some some functions specifically for that. Um, and they also have a mutt that is kind of set up for EOD. Please don't scratch the tool. So let's take a look at this and I might actually get the mutt and compare it to this as we go. So the real Avid tool has an MSRP of $90. The Leatherman mutt is much more expensive. And the Mutt also has a set of tools. I don't remember if this came with it or if they were separate, to tell you the truth. But this comes with it. And there's some use on this Mutt, a little hammer feature there. So let's take a look at what we've got on both. Now this has plastic grips on the tool. Um, 440C blade, and I can tell you that the steel on the Mutt is better. It's better. Um, but we're going to look at, we want to know the functionality of all the tools involved here. So we're going to look at everything. Spring loaded, which is nice. I always like that. Not spring loaded. Not at all. Um, you know what we're going to, let's just go over everything on the, uh, the real Avid tool first before we look towards everything else. So the knife blade on the real Avid, I'm not too impressed with to tell you the truth, um, right out of the package. Now, this is a much chunkier tool in your hand than some of the others that I've used. Um, it's a big old, I mean, it's a big, wide, thick tool. Um, the knife does come sharp and ready to use. Um, sort of a little bit of a hollow grind, but 440C, I don't know, and you just look at the finish on the blade. It's it's not great. It's not great, but it's a it's a knife that works partially serrated over there at the end, um, and it locks. One handable. I think that with a little bit of um, breaking in, it's a little little stubborn to get out. With some breaking in, it will get easier to use. We've got a carbon scraper there. It says on the package you can you can remove this you can attach it to like a standard cleaning rod too which is which is cool um what we got here oh just this moves outwards do i have to do anything with it aha uh -huh. yep so your bit attachment locks in different positions and you've got those double-sided bits that we see on some other tools, and you can purchase different sets of these, but it comes with comes with quite a few different ones here. I mean, quite a wide range of different sizes. Um, intended for, of course, rifle maintenance, um, but you could uh, replace these with whatever whatever you needed. So. Now, is this supposed to be a glass breaker on here? It doesn't really say. I'm not sure to tell you the truth. Bolt override tool there. And that's convenient the way it, it snaps down. Um, let's go to the other side and see what we've got. Now, this is like a big multi-purpose thing over here. So this guy this big guy over here, uh, retaining pin puller and an extractor scraper. This is, I mean, this is basically a big old bolt. I mean, this is for all parts of your bolt. Uh, firing pin, large diameter scraper, bolt face scrapers for your bolt lugs, um, bolt cam pin. Um, the bolt tail in there. I mean, so this whole thing is for scraping carbon off in different parts of your bolt and your pin, which is kind of cool that it's all, you know, one tool. And this is um, 
uh, what's the word, a uh, 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 pin pusher, you know, a pin punch and carbon pick. And again, this can be um, taken off like the other one can and put on to cleaning rods if you need to. So kind of a nice multi-purpose tool. So it's, it, but it, and by the way, it's not, you'll notice it's not set up as a multi-tool for other things. Um, it has replaceable wire cutter teeth, it's carbide, um, and it's got pliers, but the thing is all set up for, for your rifle. And what is really cool, ha, huh, sight adjustment tools. If you have not had to adjust the front sights, um, or even the rear sights uh, on an AR platform, you have no idea the value of this tool right here. And on one side is an A1, on the other side is an A2 type sight post adjuster worth its weight in gold rather than trying to use a bullet or a nail or something else. Um, so very nice. Um, so it, it has some standard multi-tool functionality. You're taking a look at the pouch here. Oh, I got a sticker inside. And we got some instructions that explain how all the tools work and everything. But I mean, the pouch is as good, honestly, as as any Leatherman one I've seen. It's uh, nice and tough, double layered nylon, thick, strong nylon. These things, I was a little worried about them coming out accidentally at first, but it does button down on top of them and they're in there. Um, and you know, your little sight adjustment tool is pretty good. You've got your Molly compatibility, just like you do with a Leatherman. It's good quality stuff. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's not going anywhere. When you compare what you get, uh, in terms of the tools and the functionality to the mutt. Um, so with the mutt, what you're getting is actually not as much, really, you're getting more of a multi-use multi -use tool than you are an AR platform specific tool. Uh, you have the little hammer, you have a line cutter, you have these very specific flat bits um, and bench, uh, not bench made, sorry. Leatherman has these these flat bits that they use. Um, so you actually don't have as much versatility in the bit holder as you do with the um, the real Advid because you know real Advid, I forgot actually how to put these bits in here. It's been so long. Here we go. Because you have to put these very specific um, bits in here. And um, you know, you can carry some ready mounted ones. You can carry the extra ones. You've got this long one. You've got two long ones mounted on here that come with the tool um, with this little kind of pop lock thing. You've got a knife blade of considerably better steel, I will say. And you've also got a saw blade which you don't get with the real Avid, but the real Avid, is, I mean, is entirely focused on your AR, whereas this is a multi-tool with some functions for rifle stuff. You know, this is the sight adjustment thing. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know if, if honestly, if you really can compare the two, because the Mutt is just a multi-tool that has some AR functions on it, whereas the real Avid AR-15 tool is, quite honestly, a it's a, it's a full AR-15 tool that has some multi-tool use built in. So the real Avid is gonna go in, I like it. I definitely wanna try it out. Um, it really seems like it's got some good functions there if you are an Avid, real Avid shooter. So the cool thing is, guess what? In this box, it's only four items. We have four Likeits out of all this stuff, which is thrilling to me. Um, now, of course, this could be downgraded to a mat or even a don't like it after I, after I mess with it and I talk to Darren. Um, but four like it out of four items. This is a 100% box. I don't think we've ever had a 100% like it box in the history of all the boxes on the channel. Woohoo! Wish I had fireworks. Uh, but that's really awesome. That's really, really awesome. Um... Now remember that the like it I gave this is just for the basics of it, a lot for the pouch and because it has some usable stuff in it. Um, there's, you know, I'm, I'm being kind of charitable the way, I, the way I pick apart medical stuff. Um, there are some serious improvements that can be made on this. Um, 
you know, they're absolutely, we're not, I won't get back into it. I spent so much time on the medical kit, but I like the gear that's in this box. Um, not a lot of gear. I mean, normally we're six, seven items per box, you know, and we got four items, but I think they focused on four good items. Once again, if you're not a shooter, this box probably is not going to thrill you at all, but it works well for me. Um, I think it works well for those who uh, own AR platforms or, you know, professionally, you know, you, you're, you're around an AR platform or an M16, an M4, something like that. Now, I would like to hear from all of you guys out there in YouTube land. What do you think of this box? We also have battle box here we've got primal urge we've got we got another pile of snow so i'm still waiting to do the follow-ups for battle box 71 but they will be coming i promise they will be coming in some more exciting stuff so you've got that to look forward to so anyway guys just know that you are all absolutely awesome i appreciate every single one of you and i will be back again real soon